Hello, my name is Adrian Bukrosh and I work as a mobile technologist at Mercury. And today I'm going to talk about Kotlin Multiplatform in production. I don't know if you have noticed, but Kotlin Multiplatform became a huge thing in the past years. And now you can develop it for multiple platforms, uh, from JVM to basically to Windows. And um, it's even available for the Apple platforms. You can develop it for web. So actually for every use case we can imagine. And um, to be precise, uh, I, I only would like to share information about how you can use it for Android and iOS or how it's now officially called Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. This is not going to be a very deep technical talk. Uh, I will try to share insight about how you can manage a project and how you can make decisions uh, during the course of the development to make uh, a very good uh, Kotlin multi-platform app for both of your main mobile platforms. So a bit about the background and how the project came into our life. Uh, there is an event called Conference for Kotliners. It's, uh, now it's uh, in three years past, so uh, this was the third time this year and uh, because of the current situation, it became an online event. But we still needed the conference app. So let's embark on a journey and uh, let's develop that app. Um, so these are, these are the best details. Uh, we want to make a conference app for the Cotinus 2020 and we want to do it in multi-platform for getting the uh, extra experience in the exit world. Uh, we have a very nice checklist here. Uh, first, we have to choose our UI technology and uh, then think about the architecture. And of course, there is a team setup uh, that's very important if you develop a multi-platform app. And uh, if you are talking about um, Kotlin native and uh, Kotlin native for iOS, we have to talk about concurrency as well. So uh, choose a rock one or uh, talk about the UI technology. So uh, I'm sure um, you all know that uh, there is uh, two very awesome, very powerful UI uh, library for our main uh, mobile platforms. Uh, one of them is Jetpack Compose for Android and SwiftUI for iOS. Uh, but uh, half a year ago, Compose wasn't mature enough uh, for us to choose uh, for our project. So we went with um, our basic approach, fragments and views uh, supported with uh, Rx. And uh, for iOS, uh, we actually choose the kind of harder and unknown path, we choose SwiftUI, and actually it worked pretty well with uh, Kotlin multi-platform, because um, if, for example, the, the shared code part uh, is uh, kind of lagging behind, um, then you can uh, very easily prototype, uh, develop UI fast uh, in SwiftUI, and then later, when, when the shared code is ready, then you can uh, connect it uh, um, to your existing UI code. Um, we got 100 weeks pay for, for this decision and uh, if you talk about data sources and shared code, let's check our uh, architecture. Um, in our case, uh, we use a very classic MVVM approach. We have data sources, use cases, view models and the UI of course. Um, and by data source, um, we mean the, the code that is responsible uh, for getting the data. The use case, uh, basically the, the business logic part. And um, um, by VM, we mean the glue code that connects the, the business logic uh, um, and the UI. Um, it's important um, um, to decide where you want to split uh, these uh, software layers and which part you want to put it into the shared code and uh, which part uh, you want to um, keep it native. Um, so let's, uh, let's see the first example and I'm sure it will be clear for everyone. So the first approach, I call it the coward, is uh, when you only uh, share uh, your uh, data source, you only implement your data source in the common code and uh, all the other um, parts of your application is implemented uh, twice um, because, because you implement it native and, and by native here it means that um, yeah, you implement it for both uh, mobile platforms and uh, possibly this is the safest option because uh, very little code you will uh, share with Kotlin multi-platform 
um, and and I, I, I think it's um, it's not the best. So uh, another uh, possibly um, it's it's the other um, end of the, the uh, spectrum. Uh, I call it the, the lawful good. Um, is uh, when you only implement your UI, and uh, by UI um, um, we mean, for example, view control as in fragments um, uh, for for mobile and. Um, and all the other parts of the application, uh, even the VM, uh, is implemented uh, in the common code. This could be a bit risky because maybe the VM can have uh, implications about the platform and then, then you will have to have some conditional code paths uh, in your VM if, if uh, that happens. So um, there are ups and downs also here. And there is there is a very very risky one. Uh, I call it chaotic good. Um, it's when you implement everything in the common code. So it means uh, you basically have nothing uh, uh, in the in the platform specific part. Um, and this is uh, uh, you could say that this is like crazy. And and uh, and how is it possible? But there is a, an Icerock Dev uh, company. Uh, called Icerc Dev, and uh, they implemented this uh, Moco widgets uh, library. It's for Kotlin multi-platform, and actually you can implement UI code in the common code section for for Kotlin multi-platform, and you will not have uh, or very little uh, platform-specific code in your project. I think it's it's very exciting and and uh, an amazing approach, and actually it works. So uh, and finally. Uh, and this is the approach we, we, we choose. I, I call it uh, neutral God, uh, good uh, or, or the jet brain, and, and because and I call it the jet brain because this is uh, uh, the recommendation of, of jet brains. So you only put in the common code um, your business logic and your data sources, so your so your models, use cases, and uh, then the all the other parts is implemented in. Um, in a, in a native platform specific way. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a safe, but, but still you gain a lot by implementing business logic uh, in your common code. Um, so it depends, but it worked for us. Uh, and uh, we got a lot of space for uh, deciding this one. And uh, let's talk about team setup because uh, it's very important. Um, so basically we have uh, three um, uh, three uh, parts of the application we, we need to develop and we can we can distinct them very easily. We have the common code, we have the iOS code and the Android code. And uh, we need developers to, to develop those. And we have uh, three companions we can choose. Uh, we have an Android warrior, we have an iOS wizard and uh, I call it a common code thief. So both have uh, their experiences on their domain, and uh, let's see how we can uh, split them between um, the codes we need to we need to implement. So um, the first approach is is if we handle it um, um, the application as an SDK. So um, this uh, this time. Um, every developer develops their own part, so the common uh, code thief only develops common code and uh, all the um, native mobile developers develop uh, their part as well. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's called an SDK approach because it's, it's like an SDK or, or you can think about another analogy that's uh, very very like regular when, when you have to uh, work against uh, a backend, work with the backend, um, you will actually um, sub, uh, have it like separately and, and um, you, you have to communicate a lot uh, to, get, uh, to get from this approach what you need. And uh, I, think, I think there are, are many better ways to do it. Um, for example, there is the end-to-end -end when, when both of your um, uh, mobile developers develop the common code as well. 
uh, the only risk you can uh, face that uh, when you ask an iOS developer to develop a Kotlin code for you, uh, and uh, this could happen. <laughs> the, this is uh, actually uh, from from Kevin Gallivan's uh, 2018 uh, slide from Kotlin, uh, Kotlin Conf. Um, uh, we we laugh a lot uh, still about it. So um, iOS developers really like uh, Swift code, and uh, and maybe they don't want to drop it um, for for Kotlin. Um, so so be aware, Swift is life. Um, and if you are uh, talking about dogs uh, already, there is a, a, an approach I, I call dog fooding. So it means um, that one of the mobile developers developed the common code as well and uh, later develops uh, uh, their part of the UI. So it means it, um, it's or, uh, the developer already starting to use uh, the code uh, it developed in, in the other module. Uh, and, and kind of uh, already checks it if it works or it uh, fits into um, the um, the platform specific part as well. So it, it's kind of a, um, a quality insurance as well. Um, I, I think this is the one we use and, and it worked very well for us. Um, and of course, uh, um, because uh, many Android engineers have already experienced with Kotlin, uh, it makes sense to, to develop uh, the common code uh, uh, with, an, with an Android engineer. Okay, uh, we got another uh, 100 XP for, for this decision as well. And uh, now we, uh, we arrive to the hardest part, uh, which is gonna feel like a bit of a black magic, uh, because we have to talk about the concurrency and how, how do we solve it. For Android, it's very easy. Um, you can basically use uh, coroutines uh, from your uh, common shared code to, uh, to your uh, Android code. Uh, but for iOS, it's not that simple. Coroutines are, are currently not, not working for iOS. And you have to find a solution there. Um, and, and, implement, and, and dealing with concurrency with Kotlin Native is, is very complicated. And it comes from the nature that, that you have to um, um, handle your objects you want to share uh, between your threads. Uh, it's it's uh, very, very complicated. Um, so what we did uh, is we actually implemented an async wrapper, wrapper uh, for uh, bridging this gap uh, between the platforms. So both of our platform uh, used um, this uh, async data class. And uh, from the interface uh, or the access point of our, of our common code uh, uh, was uh, implemented uh, by, by this uh, class. And uh, there is already a very interesting um, uh, fact that it's a class and it's not an interface. So why is that? Um, it, uh, it's also a Kotlin native, um, uh, a Kotlin native restriction. So um, if you want to use generics, you can uh, only support uh, um, this with uh, classes. And uh, below 1.3, you have to use um, um, Objective Generics compiler flag. Um, you have to uh, add this to your uh, Gradle script. Script, but above 1.4, um, it's enabled for you, and you can disable it. But because there are cases um, where you don't need it actually. So um, yeah, um, so we implemented this this class, and um, it's it's basically just a, a, a more fancier uh, callback. Because uh, as you can see, there is this unsuccess um, um, or uh, unsuccess uh, lambda function you can provide, and in the on error part, also um, it implements uh, it returns a closable um, object. So um, basically, this is this is the um, interface we provided for for the platform specific parts. And um, there are improvements in uh, Kotlin 1.4 um, because um, um, 
I think um, JetBrains known that that these um, kind of wrappers uh, started to spread and and everyone is is kind of uh, trying to implement it by themselves and and there is a, a very high risk uh, if you have a very complicated um, um, uh, threading code in your applications we didn't have that uh, but if you have uh, you can easily uh, burn yourself with, with uh, dealing with the uh, Kotlin native concurrency part um, it worked for us um, we kind of went with this naive uh, approach and uh, because our application wasn't that complicated it, it um, didn't cause any trouble never mind we have an improvement in Kotlin 1.4 um, um, that uh, you can actually um, have uh, suspending functions as, as, the, um, as the interface of your, of your common code. So um, you can use it as a coroutines from um, Android, from the Android specific code, and uh, you, can, um, you can use it uh, this way. Uh, as you can see on the slide uh, from iOS, so you can just provide a closure and you will have a result, an error, and, and check if the error is like, is this? Uh, it means something uh, bad happened, or otherwise you get your results. So it's, it's much more better, and I think it's a much safer way to use it this way. Um, and um, by checking uh, um, um, concurrency for um, Kotlin native and, and making this uh, uh, bridge um, above the gap we had between the platforms uh, we received another another ton of XP so but if you are if you are uh, not afraid of, of getting your hands dirty and um, learning a lot about um, uh, how you can make the best possible wrapper for, for uh, coroutines and uh, if you want to bridge uh, the gap with uh, RX5 uh, on the iOS side, for example, there is a very nice article um, um, presented by TouchLab. Uh, yeah, uh, you can get all the details you need from there. Um, and yeah, so I, I talk a lot about, lot about um, how hard it is to um, implement um, concurrent uh, code with uh, Kotlin native and uh, I think JetBrains is, is uh, already over it because uh, they announced um, that uh, they're gonna change how it works so so I guess no more freezing or, or no no not the way how it is right now and uh, and they want to make a, a more uh, understandable and a much more um, developer friendly approach to, to use a uh, concurrent code in a, in a Kotlin native environment. I hope for the best and uh, I, think, I think we can only benefit from this change. So we um, kind of arrived to the conclusion and um, we gathered tons of experience uh, implementing our first uh, um, Kotlin multi-platform app and this is um, our first production app in Kotlin multi-platform and of course we, uh, or we already learned that it's actually not that hard that we first thought and that's because uh, the community was really behind this approach and uh, they, they pushed it so far even when JetBrains kind of um, um, was behind their schedule or, or, or it wasn't that ready, the community uh, um, put, put all their effort in it. And now, uh, actually, I, I think it's, it's a very, very um, good approach to, to develop an application with, with Kotlin multi-platform because it's, I think it's not that hard um, that you think. So, Actually, uh, Kotlin Multiplatform OI, because get used to it is the official name now, uh, is in alpha. So it was experimental for a long time, and now it's in alpha. So there is another um, another reason uh, for you to to start working in it. And uh, yeah, um, Kotliners, the app I was just talking about, is is going to be open source um, very soon. We are actively working on migrating to. Um, Kotlin 1.4, uh, there are many, many um, 
improvements about uh, multi-platform and uh, we don't want to share any deprecated code with you so stay tuned and uh, Kotliner's app is, is, is coming to open source and uh, this is my last slide so I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, see you on the next Kotliner's event.